The Louisville Cardinals pulled off the upset of the weekend, and it set the ACC standings on fire. Let's bring in the squad. You're talking ball with the ACC squad. From Florida State to North Carolina, from Syracuse to Miami, and from NC State to California, it's the local experts of the Locked On Podcast Network, bringing you scoops, breakdowns, and the most comprehensive preview of the upcoming ACC weekend. Hang on, it could get loud, it could get heated, and it will definitely be fun. Squad up, you're part of the ACC squad. Shout out to the Everydayers. There are just two teams left in the ACC unbeaten in conference. Just one unbeaten left. Right now, Miami and SMU on a collision course for the ACC championship game. This episode of the ACC squad is brought to you by FanDuel. You can start the season with a big return. New customers on FanDuel can place a $5 bet, and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets. If you win that first $5 bet, visit FanDuel.com to get started. We'll talk about the standings. We'll talk about the ACC football championship picture. We'll talk about the games last weekend, this coming weekend, week 11. I am Alex Dono from Locked on Canes. We got Jackson Holzer from Locked on Syracuse. We got Kenton Gibbs and Grayson Boone from Locked on Wolfpack. We got J.J. Jackson from Locked on Duke. We got Dalton Pence from Locked On Louisville, and Louisville, they put the nightcap on in the ACC. I, I, I usually at this point I ask who's buying the first round, but Dalton Pence is buying the first round. If he unmutes himself, he's buying the first round. <laughs> first, it's the wide eye. Been, now it's the yeah, white He said too many rounds. <laughs> it's been a uh, it's been a roller coaster recording. It's like it's been a roller coaster year for Louisville guys. It's a uh, I. Truthfully, I never thought I'd be buying the shots after um, sort of the first couple of weeks, but this was the performance that fans were looking for all season long, and it was one that Louisville was pretty much dominant from beginning to end, beating Clemson for the first time in program history and handing the Tigers their first night game loss at Memorial Stadium since 2013 when famous Jameis came um, to Death Valley. So, Vibes are great, man. Unfortunately, it, it took a little while to see who most of the fans thought this team was. You are who your record says you are, but the vibes are good heading into the bye week. So, yeah, All I right, well, if, if we really want to get into this thing, right, I think that we need to give more credit to Louisville because Dalton is going to talk his talk today, and he deserves it because everybody keeps talking about Clemson wetting the bed and pissing down their leg. But I'm going to tell you something. Did y'all not see a Louisville team that pushed Clemson around up front? Did y'all not see a Louisville team that said, oh, you know, your defense, they're tough. They're all that. Hey, we got this true freshman running back. He's pretty good. Hey, you want to meet him? And meet him again. And meet him one more time after that. And they kept continuously doing that. And then we talk about the special teams, which has been an Achilles heel for Louisville at times this year, right? Getting kicks in their own block, making terrible errors on special teams that you just can't have. They come up big time in this game. I'll tell you what, everybody's talking about Clemson's letdown, but we all need to take a second and give Dalton his love because his birds perform, and they showed out, and that's why, you know, at the end of the day, Clemson looked dish-doubled, dismayed, not because they were, because Louisville made them look like that through most of the game. It, ooh, it's 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 a fragile fan base right now, it feels like, because, you know, with, with I mean, Josh Pate said it best. I don't know if you all heard what he said about when the Louisville beat Clemson. It was almost like that was sort of the nail in the coffin for this um, this whole trend that Davo Sweeney just won't utilize the portal. And now you get that home loss. And I mean, Clemson fans, I, I mean, I've had a couple text me saying, well, it was the it was the blocks from the offensive line diving at our players knees. Dabo says in the postgame press conference, no, nah, that wasn't it. And cut blocks are illegal the last time that I checked. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I'm used to it. I, I would expect that when a favorite at home in a night game, a place they haven't lost since 2013 at night, uh, they're going to say it's, it's, it's copium. They're high on copium. That, that's all it is. Yeah, we, we beat ourselves, guys. Lord forbid we had – one lead in the game, and then we had no offensive rhythm throughout. But it is what it is, man. Only thing that matters, what's in the W and L column. Coming into, the season, to <laughs> coming into the season, I had several concerns about if Clemson could sustain a high enough offense to carry them through the season. Last couple of weeks, they looked like they were going to answer me wrong. But this week, I found it fascinating. Clemson had no turnovers. 
They held the ball for 15 more minutes than Louisville did and had just about 90 more yards, still lost by 12. That's a domination by Louisville. They should well, take the that one and run it forever. Yeah. I mean, Ken Kenton and I talked about this earlier this week on Locked on ACC. Look, it, it felt to me, and, and this is not taking anything away from Louisville, but still, because, you know, two things can be true at once. Louisville played their best game of the season. They played up to their talent level. You know, But you also see the flaws in Clemson, and it just never looked to me when Clemson was down by double digits like that was a team that was built to play from behind. Like, it never yeah. looked that way. And if you want to be a championship-caliber team, whether you're talking ACC championship, they might miss out on that title game now, or you're talking national championship, I think you have to be able to, in this day and age in college football, you have to be able to pull off a comeback. And at no point did I feel like there were any threat to do that once they fell down double digits. But well, there right there's been two games like this season crying. when Clemson has fallen behind, and they've lost both of them. Donald didn't even look right. like they were trying to come back though. Like, Oof. Yeah. There goes the Wi Fi. Ah, the Wi Fi. The under hit. That was an up snip. I told you. So, so, ah, ha, ha, ha. I, I, I will say this though. I will say this in defense of my boy Dalton. You know, you're absolutely right in, in that they did not look like they were a team playing from behind. But we also need to acknowledge. That that team, regardless of what you think about them, regardless of what, what you think in terms of Louisville's uh, ability to cover and defend, I don't think that they could push the ball at a high level down the field at all. By the way, Dalton just lost me some money on FanDuel. I, I took the yeah. over. I took I the, the over. Oh, whether or not. Well, thank you, know, you very much for participating in my very own sports book where we yeah. bet on whether or not <laughs> Dalton's Wi Fi is going to go out. Chet, you know what? You know what? Right. It doesn't matter if Dalton's Wi Fi goes out. His defensive backs don't. 75 odds, and yes, you still took it. Here's the reality, Chet. Dono, I don't care what questions you ask today. You might ask some really good questions. We got a good show playing for the rest of the, of the afternoon. But the only question that truly matters, and I need you all to drop the comments down in the chat below, the over-under is now at three and a half times of how many times my Wi-Fi is going to go out in this show. We're, 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 we're barely even seven. I love being the house. I'm just, I'm just printing money right hey, now. Hey, listen. Hey, listen. I believe in Dalton like I believe in his cards. I, I'm going to take, take the under. All right? I believe in you. Okay? You got two more. What were, right, we so, talking, so, what were we talking about Clemson? Or well, we talking yeah, about I, I, I want to talk about Pitt as well. Guess, okay, oh, so, yes, so Clemson, yes, this, yes, that, that was one team unbeaten in conference who fell thanks to Louisville, but there was another one. Now somebody's O had to go when Pitt, who was unbeaten overall 7-0, and took on SMU with just one, with one overall loss, zero conference losses. So both teams were unbeaten in ACC play, and SMU didn't just win. SMU absolutely obliterated the Pitt Panthers at home and Kenton, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that Pat Narduzzi and your guys up there in Pittsburgh PA couldn't keep up the pace this year, but you know, it, it was a tough loss for you, KG. You know, I, I want to make one thing clear. Okay. That was not a loss for me so much as what, there we go with Dalton again. That Wait was a not a loss true? for me. That's two. We got two. <laughs> we got that blue. was not a loss. <laughs> that was not a loss for me. If you so hear that sound in the distance, that's me printing money against Kenton right now with wow. how many times Dalton's wow. Wi-Fi is going out. Don't worry about it. The I, universe I, did not want to hear me talk about the Pittsburgh Panthers like I have been doing. Don hey, about the Pittsburgh I, and the universe said, no, you can't. You can't take a victory can I, lap. Can I, can I say something real quick, though? Because everybody's going to victory lap on Pitt and on my take on Pitt for a second. But can I talk about an uh, interesting parallel? There are two Power Four teams in the state of Pennsylvania. Both Power Four teams in the state of Pennsylvania took on a one-loss team whose only loss came to an undefeated team in the in their games this week. Both of those teams walked out as losers, and yet one of them is being ragged on as a fraud, as the other is being held as oh, they're still one of the best ten teams in the nation. I I, I find that interesting. I find that very interesting. Am I the only one? Am I the only one here? Is what you're doing. Penn, State, Penn State needs to be given some some flack as well because this. Wait a minute! You're comparing Pitt and Penn State? Yes. Absolutely. Oh, you've got to be kidding me! Absolutely. Stop it! What? Stop it! But see, stop. and this is what I'm talking about. Stop. This is what I'm talking about. Stop, stop it! Stop it! Stop! So, stop! So, so, listen, listen, Pitt. Pitt is a good team. 
Yeah. Obviously, they spanked my Syracuse Orange. Mm-hmm. They're not ready just yet. They and are Penn not State on the is? level of Penn State. That's not, not level. Every time Penn they play State a big State. game, they get shown to not beat that. They're still not better than Penn State. You're, Listen, at the end, of, but see, and this is what I'm talking about. Against Ohio State is the same. The yeah, Penn State brother, journey, my brother in Christ, it, my brother it, in Christ. It, when will Penn State it, ever win a big game? I'm not, saying, I'm not trying Pitt to say. Not. Pitt gets not for beating nobody's I, I, and then losing it in this game against SMU. And on the other side, you're sitting here telling me I'm insane for saying, "Hey, Penn State's not a good team." This is what I'm talking about. Pitt got whooped. Pitt absolutely had it laid on them thick. I will not deny that. I will not say, oh, Pitt looked as good as Penn State on Saturday. But last time I checked, one loss is one loss is one loss. Oh and last time I checked, we're still sitting up here talking about, well, is Clemson, you know, their eliteness nationally may be over, but they can still win some conference championships. And while we're disrespecting and discounting Pitt, SMU, give them their credit. Jennings played his ass off. He did. He did no turnovers this game. They didn't turn the ball over. Clemson, Clemson's 19th in the country. They're way below here, and Pitt's 23. There's a four-team gap but That's, there. that's what I'm saying. But that's what I'm saying. Look at the gap between – I'm not just talking about Clemson and Pitt. I'm talking about Pitt and Penn State. There is a, what, 17-spot gap between those two? And okay. that's what you're telling me? Well, there's, a bunch of te- there's a bunch what? of teams that are, like, jumbled together in this top 25. Can, not so because anybody, he is, happens to anybody is disagreeing with you that there is a completely different double standard for the Big Ten and the SEC teams. Jackson is. The ACC. Jackson is disagreeing with you. Because home against Ohio State is a little bit different than a I, blowout loss I, to SMU. I agree. I, I, I think I think both, both point, right. though, there, there are so many two-loss teams that are ahead of one loss pit in the Hello. ranking. Hello. Too many. Hello. Okay. A three-loss bandy is closer to them than they are to Penn State. Come I on, think dog. You're both right. I think you're Come both on. right. But you know who's also right? I, I, since I'm taking victory laps today, today I'll take another Come one on. because, look, bear with me, I don't get to take many. So I let enjoy. me just take a second enjoy. lap around the track. I said before this game, and I gave Pittsburgh the credit and – you know, for, for starting out the season the way they did, but I said if there was a healthy Kevin Jennings, Pittsburgh's defense was going to be put on blast, and they were giving up 50 points. Yeah. Dono, I'll let you take us into the next segment. I just had to well, and also I need to take my victory lap as well. And sorry, JJ, but even though th- things were pretty dicey in the third quarter, Miami scores another 50 burger. Miami didn't have the only 50. I give credit also to Kenton and Grayson because NC State put up a 50 burger as well. 50 burgers all around. We also we had not put up a not 50 burger. We had a big comeback. That was a big comeback. So we're gonna have, we have a lot more to talk about. We got the squad here. We'll talk about games coming up this weekend as well. Because yeah, the ACC championship it's getting closer and closer. You want to keep it locked right here on the ACC squad, my friends. With Robin Hood Gold, you don't need a silver spoon to eat up the financial favors of the one percent. Robin Hood Gold allows. Others to get the rates and perks usually reserved for high society. Now, the resourceful individual with Robinhood Gold can earn the very liberal rate of 4.5% APY on uninvested cash and be rewarded with a handsome 3% retirement boost on an IRA account. Robinhood Gold provides the privileges of a high net worth for any net worth. These generous benefits are now available for only $5 a month. The new gold standard is here with Robinhood Gold. Sign up at Robinhood.com slash gold. Terms apply. For specific disclosures, visit Robinhood.com slash gold. Investing involves risk. Rate, rates may change. Gold membership is offered by Robinhood Gold, LLC. Folks, we're also proudly brought to you by FanDuel. And yeah, we've been having a lot of fun and winning a lot of money this year with FanDuel, the official uh, sports book, an official sports book partner of the NFL and America's number one sports book. And get ready to tackle the NFL action because right now, New customers can bet $5 and get 150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more right on the same page where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. 
We got the squad here on Locked on ACC. And, and fellas, uh, I was down at Hard Rock Stadium on Saturday, and uh, we've seen it a lot with Miami where they start out very hot. They seem to take their foot off the gas. The defense gives up some ridiculously easy scoring drives. Uh, Duke had a, a four-play, 83-yard drive in the second quarter. Miami had some – by the way, is, is that a third? Uh, three. <laughs> a third dropout for Dalton. Uh, Miami was down uh, 28 to 17 in the third quarter, and then Cam Ward happened, and Miami ends up winning the game 53 to 31. Uh, Duke at one point had a 28 to three scoring run. Miami closes out the game with a 36 to three scoring run. So you know, Miami kind of the opposite of Clemson, where Clemson you you question their offense, don't worry too much about their defense. With Miami, it's the opposite. I don't know if anyone can stop their offense, but you know the defense. It's been a liability at times this year. So uh, what did you guys make of the Duke game? And can Miami get away with having the number one offense in the country, but a defense that is suspect but opportunistic? Well, look, it's no secret that basketball season is here, and I'm elated for that, right? And basketball <laughs> season is known as the game of runs. We saw a game of runs as you're laying out there, Donna, with this one this yeah. past week. And I mean, back and forth. This one went, but at the end of the day, for Miami's offense to turn it on the way that they did uh, was was truly impressive. I mean, and Cam Ward continuing to make his Heisman case in this. I thought at first, Dono and you, you and I talked on a, a crossover this past week that, hey, 20 and a half, that spreads kind of up there. I really don't know how to feel about that. And at the end of it, Miami's still able to cover. I mean, that just speaks to the offensive firepower, I think, that we've seen from Miami all season. But, uh, yeah, I'm fully aboard the basketball train now, though, that we're letting the record be straight. <laughs> well, that's, what, JJ, that's, that's exactly what I want to hear right before NC State plays Duke this there weekend. You go. Yeah. To answer your question, throw. Dono, I think Miami can get away with a lackluster defense. I think their offense is actually that good, where they can just ramp it up and then drop a 50-burger at the drop of a hat. It seemingly works so far this year. I don't know who they're going to face the rest of the year that could change that. Yeah, I mean, I buy that. It all comes down to, um, you know, the ceiling in the playoff. When you have a team that can put up 50 points a game on offense, more often than not the way they're doing it, um, that that's really impressive no matter who we're talking about, and especially with it being in a Power Four conference. Now, when you get to the college football playoff, then you have a little bit of a different discussion because, you know, you're yeah. going to go up against some better defenses. So you're going to have to get some defensive stops, but – uh, unlike some, I believe that Miami's defense isn't playing up to the full potential. I mean, there's a really good defensive line down in Coral Gables, and I think that um, when they continually build up some more chemistry, you know, Ruben Bain missed some time early on in this season. I think the more and more opportunities for those guys to get to play together, it really all comes down to the secondary. And if they can at least be serviceable and, let's say, cut the big plays that they're giving up in half, I mean, they're going to be a really tough out when we get to uh, December and January. I'm sorry to tell you, but you are who you are at this point in the season, right? Yeah. Like, we we would like to believe, and trust me, nobody would like to believe more than Grayson and I, that, hey, teams can become an entirely different team. They can do it. It's possible. You are who you are to some extent. And this Miami team, they, they have an defense. There's no D involved in that whatsoever. However, their offense, <laughs> and I mean this very genuinely, can any of you name any backfield duo better than Fletcher and Martinez right now? If, if Even if you could, could you name three better than Fletcher and Martinez? Just one. So the, the, the last time I saw a backfield game. that good was uh, about 23 years ago when Miami had Clinton Portis, Frank Gore, Willis McGahee, Najee Davenport on the same roster. Okay. I don't know Ohio State, but that's maybe one. And even, okay. that, even that's debatable. Okay, wide receiver core. I mean, they got guys everywhere, everywhere you look up. It's not just Xavier Restrepo, even though he's the lead receiver in the ACC. They've got guys all over the place in terms of pass catchers. If you're thinking about that group, can you name three or four pass catcher groups better than them in America? You can't. Probably not. Maybe. And one. they have a walking, living – if you're a comic book nerd, you're going to get this. They have the living tribunal at quarterback in Cam Ward. He is walking plot armor. He is Walker, Texas Ranger out there. He doesn't do push-ups. He pushes the earth down the way he's playing right now. So, honestly and truly, 
Miami's defense, as I've said many times on Locked on ACC, and as I'll continue to say, they just need to be opportunistic. They just need to get a timely stop here and there. Nobody's expecting this defense to turn into the 2000 Miami defense where it's like, hey, <laughs> yeah, good luck score. Good luck to you. More pro- They're not expecting that. Ray Lewis ain't walking through that door. Nobody's uh, thinking about that, right? But what this team needs to do is you need to at least be serviceable defensively, which at times against Duke, they just didn't look that way. And that's been a problem all, at multiple points this season, like we talked about with Cal putting up their season high on this team. So for Miami, it's all about, all right, we get it. Offense is spectacular. You can do it all these different ways offensively. You've got to account for every blade of grass offensively. But you need a stop at some point in time if you're talking about the play. Can you get through the ACC without that? Yes, that's very possible. Can you get through the playoff without that? No. But I will also say this, and I'm going to pass it off here. What an exciting time for Miami because who coming into this season would have thought we're not going to talk about them winning the ACC by week nine or ten. We're not even going to be talking. That's going to be a foregone conclusion that it's Miami's. Then we'll be talking about playoffs. So credit to Miami, credit to Crystal Ball, credit to Cam, credit to all these additions in the portal. They have been fantastic. I'll have I mean, one before the thing, season, uh, we thought we'd be talking about Florida State being in that spot. Yeah. And like I, I haven't even seen Brian Smith Brian in here Smith like running. Month. Brian Smith is ducked in the smoke. Come on, Brian. Come on, bring that ball shiny head on here. Come on. We need you. He's too he's busy. trying to raise the money for Norvell's buyout, is what he's doing right now. He's too busy analyzing the D commitments. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Well, okay. So c- coming into this weekend, guys, uh, you know, since we have we have so many representatives with us for one of the games coming up this week. We've got Duke trying to bounce back from that Miami game, taking on NC State, a Wolfpack team. You got some pep in your step this week, guys. CJ Bailey, freshman quarterback, has been lighting it up. Uh, any any of the three of you can take the floor here. What do you think is going to happen when the Wolfpack take on the Blue Devils? I'll take it. Yeah, go, go ahead, AJ. I was just going to. I'm. Two game losing streak for Duke. Uh, it's been tough to watch these last couple of weeks with the SMU game that is so infamous now. I was going to add earlier when we were talking about that SMU and Pitt. It's crazy what the offense for SMU could do with, when they don't turn the football over like they did six times against the Blue Devils and Duke still lost. Uh, and then four turnovers offensively for Duke in that Miami game. Still was able to make um, some big plays here and there. But uh, this offense has just been a little bit too inconsistent over the last few weeks. That's what concerns me going down the stretch here. Um, it, it feels like there are highs and lows of Malik Murphy so far this season. That's kind of what uh, concerns me going into this game. And from my perspective, it really seems like NC State is gaining a little bit momentum at the right time of the year, which makes this really difficult for Duke going into the game on Saturday. Yeah, re- real quick, let me add uh, NC State now. They're, they're favored uh, by three points in this game. Yep. If you told me that three weeks ago, that NC State would be favored against, I would not have believed you, but Black that's White. just the, the trends that the teams are going on now. Believe it. Book it. <laughs> support it. Let me tell you something. That freshman's growing up right before our eyes, isn't he? Oh, boy. 90% completion yeah. percentage. That man, was were they doing 707? Did Stanford pinch him 59 points? Oh, my Lord. What? Let me tell you something. Duke is one in three in their last four, I believe. And even if you go to the game before that, right, they're two and three in their last five with a one point win against the Dirty Foot Club, which was a massive comeback and a seven point win against the Florida State team that has beaten nobody this season except Cal. That's all. That's it. With that being said, NC State is trending in the right direction. Duke is trending in the wrong direction. But. Duke knows how to disguise coverage is better than anybody, and there's a true freshman quarterback. So I'm worried. I'm worried. I'm not going to lie to you and say this thing is a foregone conclusion. I'm a little bit worried because Manny Diaz, can he can force some turnovers better than anybody. And NC State's defense this year, they've been known to let up a run or two to running backs that are getting ready to learn some enterprise rental car at the end of their careers. So I, I'm, I'm, I'm not as confident as certain members of Wolfpack Nation, but this is very much so a winnable game for State. And- JJ, you highlighted the turnovers for Duke. That's been a big story for NC State as well. I'd be shocked if that wasn't the end result of this one. Whoever turns the ball over less is probably going to win this football game. For NC State, you know, they were coming out of a bye two weeks ago after they had gone all the way out to Cal and picked up a random win on the road that no one thought they could do. 
this team has reestablished a new goal, and that goal is to finish 4-0 and after that bye. Coming out, they put it on Stanford. NC State fans are begging and pleading to figure out how NC State can start with a week one bye next year. For whatever reason, coming out of a bye, this team is always just completely brand new. I think I saw a stat the other day. Dave Dorn's teams coming after the bye are like 17-5 and five over his tenure. If we can figure out how to channel that energy, I might take the pack to win on Saturday. <laughs> the week one by, we'll pass that along to the commissioner. Uh, when we come back, because as of, and as we've seen around college football, you, you expect the unexpected, but as of right now, it would be Miami versus SMU in the ACC championship. Who wins that matchup? We'll talk about it right here. I'm Alex Dono from Locked on Canes. We got... Kenton Gibbs and Grayson Boone from Locked On Wolfpack, Dalton Pence from Locked On Louisville, JJ Jackson from Locked On Blue Devils. You want to keep it locked right here to the squad. Guys, your sex life is important, but your schedule is busy. You don't need to have time. You don't have time to go to the doctor's office to get treated for ED. Through Hims, you can get a personalized ED treatment without stepping foot outside your door. Hims is changing men's health care by providing you with access to affordable sexual health treatments from the comfort of your couch. Hims provides access to a range of doctor-trusted ED treatments like chewable hard mints, Viagra, Cialis, and their, ger- and their generics for up to 95% cheaper. The process is 100% online, so there's no need for uncomfortable doctor's visits. Just answer a series of questions on their site, and a medical provider will determine the right treatment option if prescribed. Your medication ships directly to you in discreet packaging for free. No insurance is needed, and one low price covers everything from treatments to ongoing care. With hundreds of thousands of trusted subscribers, Hims can help you find the ED option that works for you. Start your free online visit today at hymns.com slash locked on. That's H-I-M-S dot com slash locked on for your personalized ED treatment options. Hymns.com slash locked on. The products mentioned are chewable compounded products, which are not approved by or verified for safety or effectiveness by the FDA. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate. Restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety info. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Locked on ACC squad here. Uh, all right, so guys, what, what do you think um, the spread would be uh, if if Miami does take on SMU and Charlotte, which is what we're on track for on December 7th. Um, I, I think it would be something like probably Miami minus six and a half, minus seven. I think they'd probably set it around a touchdown. K- KG, you're giving me some eyebrows, Kenton. What do you think? I disagree. I think this is at least Miami nine and a half, at least, Ooh, okay. at, at minimum. I think okay. it could be bigger than that. I mean, don't get me wrong. SMU has played a fantastic season. They have been above and beyond. They've been the little engine that could all season long. However, one team has Cam Ward, the other team does not. Don't get me wrong. I think they'll be able to put up plenty of points on that Miami defense, but the reality is, at some point in time, you got to stop that Cam Ward guy. You've got to stop him. And I'll tell you this, everybody talks about Cam Ward's late season collapses. He hasn't done it so far. He hasn't done it. We've heard about this mythical, like, hey, there's going to be a point where Cam Ward does the thing that that's the reason he's not already in the NFL. He hasn't done it yet. So I think if he stays on pace for who he is right now, even with their defense play, how they playing, I think they're at least nine and a half, ten point favorites. That's exactly where my mind went as well. And I think Miami's offense is just so overpowering. I wouldn't be surprised to see double digits in their favor. And not to say that SMU can't score the ball as well, but I wouldn't exactly say SMU has faced any offensive juggernauts they've had to go toe to toe with outside of probably Louisville, to be honest. But I think uh, I think somewhere between nine and ten is probably the range you'd be looking at. I've gone seven to ten as well. I think we're all kind of in agreement here. I just the offense of Miami, like man, I don't know how you stop that. And can SMU keep up as much? We've seen their turnovers. Uh, I certainly have over the last few weeks, and you got to take care of the football in games like that. So. Uh, it'd be a fun game, but I just I think Miami would be too much. Yeah, I mean that's pretty much I I want to say probably closer to five than ten, but I agree with the panel here. I think that when you have a quarterback that is playing as good as Cam Ward is right now, it's really hard to. I mean, you're essentially saying that SMU is going to score about forty points if you're kind of basing off the spread there, because you know Miami's going to get theirs. So 
I, I'd, I'd probably be closer to like eight and a half, nine. But again, you're kind of splitting hairs. I, I think it's over a touchdown for certain. Yeah. Who, who do you guys think would be, you know, the, the biggest threat to steal the spot uh, from one of those teams? Because again, my, Miami and SMU, they're, they're both going to be favored in their three remaining games. But again, I mean, somebody somebody could slip up. Uh, now, now Clemson, obviously they're, they're close in the standings. Clemson would much prefer Miami mm-hmm. to lose. Cause even if SMU loses a game, they hold a, a tiebreaker over Clemson, which is the, the common opponent of, of Louisville who SMU beat and Clemson didn't. So, uh, really Clemson fans will be rooting for Miami to lose more so than SMU Pittsburgh, uh, is still, is still in the race with one loss. No one else is really in that race because everyone else has two or more conference losses. So do you, do you think it's possible we see a different matchup come December 7th? I mean, possible, sure. Probable, probably not. I mean, these two teams do play each other. Clemson and Pittsburgh will square off. I believe it's next week. So I, by default, you would say that whoever wins that matchup has the better shot. Pittsburgh does still have to play Louisville. Clemson has – I guess an easier last couple of games, so to speak, especially since they have South Carolina at the end of the year. Uh, Well, I guess Pittsburgh does have the Citadel, but nonetheless, the point is this, it would take some pandemonium to follow for both Miami and SMU to kind of struggle because I mean, the the end of the schedule is really favorable for favorable for both. Yeah, I agree. I, while I do want to say, Hey, we're sleeping on Pitt and all that, they're rolled back to the ACC championship game at this point is going to be harder than a 20-year-old off a handful of hams. So I, I really and truly uh, see this as a situation where it, what we got now is probably what we're going to see in the uh, ACC championship. But if I had to pick somebody, if I was a- absolutely obligated to do it, give me Pitt. Give me Pitt because, again, outside of one game, they have looked great all year. Yeah. All year. They have done what they need to do, handle business all year. Do they have flaws? Yes. Are they a perfect team? No. Have defenses seem to figure out Holstein a little bit? A look, sort of, is looking that way, but I think that nobody circles the wagon like Narduzzi and company, so we'll see. And if you're Pitt, you get Clemson at home. I mean, that that's certainly an advantage. You'd rather be there than, than playing in Death Valley. We saw Louisville go in there and win on the road at Clemson this past weekend, but to to Dalton's point earlier, like that hadn't happened in over a decade. That doesn't happen too often that you're able to do that. So uh, for Pitt to have that game at home, like this would be their opportunity to get into that conversation. And before they even get there, Clemson's got to go defeat the Sandman. They got to go to Blacksburg and take care of Virginia Tech. I wouldn't rule right. Virginia Tech out of that game. It's going to be a raucous yeah. environment. You can only imagine. I think Pitt would have a better chance of making it in over Clemson. Which Ooh, all this kind of like adds, that. all this kind of adds together though. We're talking about well, it's not a sure thing that either Clemson or Pitt run the table. Well, you would need to do that by default just to have a chance to right, overtake yeah. Miami and SNU. And that is assuming like there's a lot of ifs. And Kenton, go ahead and sound off on your your ifs statement or whatever you you say. If ifs was fifth, we'd all be drunk. We'd all there be drunk. We sit here sober. You know, oh, yeah. I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what. Yes, it would take a lot. And I, like I said, I don't expect either one of these teams to make it. But in all fairness, we do have to take our hats off to some of these teams that were not expected to be here. Uh-huh. SMU and Pitt. Yeah. Who could have saw us talking about them playing relevant football, not playing spoiler, playing, hey, you can play your way in at yep. this point in the season. Yeah, and, and I don't I don't know who's the better story, honestly, because like I, I my initial reaction would be to say SMU because they're they're the first ever team to make the jump from group of five to a power conference and win their first five conference games. That's never happened before. But then at the same time, SMU last year was a lot better than Pitt was, guys. What they have three yeah. wins last year, like uh, it I, I thought it would take Pitt, you know, two, three years to kind of build to the point yeah. that they've been at. This year, so honestly, I don't know. I, I guess the better national story is SMU, but if you really dig deep, Pitt is just as good of a story, if not better. Right? Oh, absolutely. They're both wonderful stories, but I mean, SMU also went through a quarterback change. You know, who would imagine a yeah. world where somebody came in telling you, "Hey, one of these two things is going to happen. Pitt is going to be better than we <laughs> expect, and they're going to be a team that's ranked toward the end of the season with one loss, or SMU is going to replace Preston Stone and." they're going to be a team that is in, in contention 
for an ACC championship in their first year in the league. I, you know, I, I I really – you couldn't write that in Hollywood. they throw it out and say it's not real. Yeah, no doubt about it. Well, I appreciate getting together with all of you gentlemen and talking some ACC football. We'll, we'll start uh, mixing in basketball pretty soon because the season is underway. Football spicier right now. But bad. I know JJ's excited. <laughs> J- Jackson left already because he wanted to talk <laughs> basketball today. So mm-hmm. huge shout out and thank you to Kenton Gibbs and Grayson Boone from Locked On Wolfpack. Dalton Pence, huge dub uh, for the Louisville Cardinals. He's from Locked On Louisville. And JJ Jackson from Locked On Blue Devils. I am Alex Dono from Locked On Canes. We will talk to you next time on another edition of The Squad right here on the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. <laughs>